Um, thanks for coming today. My name is Mike Hobuz and uh, Tina Rocha and myself are the owners of the gallery. Oh. We're very happy to have this show of Isena Moody and uh, Tish Ingersoll. So um, we're going to have them speak a little bit about themselves and their work and their thoughts on the show. And then we'll open it up to questions. So let's give uh, Tish and Kasama a warm welcome. So, um, most of you who are here know me, uh, although not everyone I see does. Um, I went to the Pennsylvania Academy uh, back in the 60s and uh, came back in the 70s and graduated in 1980. And um, I've been showing my work since then, um, but it's gone through many different styles and evolutions. Um, I've always been interested in landscape, and um, it's led me into lots of different places. And I, I brought my old um, portfolio so you can kind of see what, where I've been going over the years. Um, I was surprised that my work took this journey, um, but it happened when I went to Ireland two years ago. And I had been working more or less in uh, this style of this painting here. And I think it's kind of an important painting to have with the other ones because you can see where the forms are going and um, the verticals and the horizontals. Um, I'm very interested in the play of light, which you wouldn't kind of necessarily think uh, by these flat colors, but um, I really want you to go in and out when you're looking at a painting, at my work. Um, I had in the 90s been painting uh, rock forms and using all kinds of colors, and then when I went into the work that's similar to this one, I decided to go down to using blue, black, and white. And that got me to focus more on uh, the geometry in, in the work that I was doing. And I based most of that work on a pond in Maine where, um, and most of my work has been influenced by my life in Maine uh, mm -hmm. since I was three. Um, and it's the place, it's like my haven. Um, but then Ireland did something else to me. And so this work, body of work uh, came about in 2014. Um, the oldest piece being this one. These two I did in Ireland, and then the one on the right I changed when I came home, and then everything else has been done since then. So that's just a little bit about me. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I love your work. I love your work, really. I, I feel it because uh, back like in Egypt, when I first studied art, uh, I used to work like this. I really loved that. Yeah? But I, I did it like with gouache colors, you know, on paper, work on paper, which I enjoyed a lot. And so it, it reminds me of myself. It's dear to me here, you know. Uh, so I graduated the, the master from uh, PAFA, Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, uh, 1999. And since then, I've been really teaching at the, the academy, at the continuing ed. Uh, my class, uh, famous class painting over the line, which you can see like what, what it means from the title, you know, painting over the line thinking out of the box, like uh, do something like you knew, something surprising, uh, getting over the fear, taking risk, all these things are involved in uh, the class I teach. And of course, teaching uh, this class to really very good artists, like I have really good artists like uh, with me, and I have to be up to that. So I really myself experiment a lot I studied art history. I studied the Barnes Foundation after the master, or during and after, uh, with Fred Osborne for maybe two years. And this is how I really understood art, you know, more, a lot more than before, where, you know, every time, like in our lives, 
and we think, oh, now I know it, you know. And then after five years or ten years, oh, I didn't know anything back then, you know. Now yeah. I, so it's like life is like that. We keep really uh, learning, you know, and there is a lot to learn. And uh, it's all really about technique. Uh, for me, this is what where we say like uh, when people find their own voice, actually they found uh, the technique to express themselves, you know. Now everybody have a voice, you know, and they can talk and sing, but not everybody you can really listen to, you know. Uh, the people who, who master their voice, you know, uh, are the ones who really found their own voice, like because they use that technique. So art really is all about really technique, you know. And we study from these masters who came before us, so it's like the, I just was saying, they uh, pass uh, the torch, uh, like in the marathon, uh, for us to hear. We don't have to take the torch and start from where they started. We do not have to reinvent the wheel. We just, from where they ended, we can take it and go forward. And even if you put one step forward, you really added something, you know, in art. Uh, so it's really all about finding our own voice uh, and with technique, like uh, the thing I really am very interested and always amaze me uh, are uh, three things. Uh, uh, one of them is space, where artists before, like uh, the Renaissance and so, uh, they did like uh, the depth, like they created depth, so you see like something close and something far. And, but like modern artists, like uh, for example with color field painting, their philosophy kind of like, uh, and abstract art, is like uh, the canvas is two dimensional, you know. Why do we have to lie and make it look like it's far and three dimensional? Why don't we respect the integrity of that two-dimensional quality? So you see like most modern art, things are popping from the canvas. The farthest thing in the painting is the canvas itself, and things are popping. You can see like clearly in my work, there is really no depth. But instead of that depth, there is the space. Like where sometimes it's paper-thin space, but it's beautiful the things under, you know. Uh, so that's like uh, the space is one thing, and the use of line, which sometimes can be integrated into the paint, sometimes it's under the paint, sometimes on top, uh, and color, with the color variation. So these are like uh, the three things that are really very important for me, and uh, it's never really the subject matter, what, we, what makes us, or what makes our voice, it is really uh, the technique. And any question, uh, you are welcome to ask. I really love to hear both of you talk about your process, what you're thinking about while you're applying the paint and making decisions. So, you know, intimate, so that to try to get into your heads. I'm not telling you. Pretend I deserve. I I don't often know ahead of time. Um, I, I start with uh, usually tape uh, on the paper, mm -hmm. and um, and then I tape around things and I make a horizontal line because I like. A having the horizon somewhere in there because mm -hmm. I even though I'm basing this on landscape I also want to go beyond but I you know that that grounding of the the uh, horizontal line is is good for me and when I started using um, a level which I use a lot um, I started using that because I'd been painting murals for the city for a long time and I'd been using grids and levels and string and all kinds of things and I realized I could use it in my own work. <laughs> so um, even though the murals were my own work, it's, it's, a, it's a different thing. So the tape for me is kind of fun because you, I can paint over it, pull it off, put it somewhere else, you know, a new piece, then pull it off, and then it, it gives me 
it gives me a structure within which I can work. And I often, I mean, with the, with the Irish ones, I start with that, but I also start with the, I, I really like the cliffs there, so that, that's kind of how I got started in most of these, drawing the cliff, one cliff in, or that shape, that triangle. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and that's how I, and I use acrylic. And, and I use um, uh, ink sometimes. I use, you know, pens. Mm -hmm. Most of my drawings are pen and ink. Mm -hmm. For me, I really never uh, know how my painting will end. It has a life of its own, kind of, yeah. you know? So what I do is, like, I create a chaos in the, in the beginning, then I make order out of it. Like I do things, drips, washes, lines, stuff like that, dark and light relationship, you know? And then uh, look at it and start communicating with the painting, what it needs, you know? Uh, usually I first put like uh, setting the tone for the painting, a mood, setting a mood, putting like little washes of other colors. And then like uh, it starts like revealing what it wants to be. So I really follow I never know uh, the end of my painting. You will see probably uh, many paintings under the painting, which I really, at, at, at an earlier stage, you know, or stage, you know, they really like good, but I keep seeing other things that I need to do, like so. It's like I'm in a mission to accomplish, like, uh, uh, what uh, the painting wants, you know, so I feel like an instrument, really. Rather than controlling what's happening, I feel like an instrument, and uh, I follow what uh, Patrick Heron, great British artist, said. Like uh, once when they ask him what rules you follow, he said the only rule I follow is that I make my hand surprise me. You know, so so I I love the surprise element in the paintings. Uh, putting unexpected color, I don't have to go like with the thing, you know, I can put a very unexpected color, you know, or a surprise color, a shocking color, you know, and then deal with it. Mm -hmm. I don't think before that, is it going to be good or not, you know, so I'll just do it and then deal with it. And it's a win-win situation, even if it's not good, you can save some of it and show it under the paint, you know, which you can see like in my work, there are things under, you know. So this is how the painting evolves to what it becomes. Could you talk about um, the two different landscapes, the landscape in Maine and the landscape in Ireland, how you responded to them? Um, well, I like to hike, and that um, happened in, happens in Maine all the time, and it happened in Ireland. and. It, it's a way of processing what I'm looking at and, and I trust eventually what I'm seeing um, and it, you know, kind of absorb it. Um, I've been seeing similarities recently because of the rocks. I used to focus on rocks in Maine. Um, uh, I think it's, it's, it's becoming less important that it's the different landscapes. It's becoming more about the organization of the space on my actual painting. Um, I remember one walk that I took in uh, Ireland. It was an eight mile walk. I was by myself and um, you know it would rain and then it would clear up and then it would rain again and I was getting very nervous because I'd never found, you know, I had this little map but I'd never been here before, and I there before, so I was going up and down and up and down, and and um, getting a little nervous. Um, and then I turned around, and there were there was this light that came through the clouds, and it and there were these three fingers of land sticking out into the water, and um, I went, wow, you know. Wow, and that's what Maine does to me, is, you know, those surprises when you turn around. And um, it still does that for me, no matter how many times I've been back. 
and I'm going back to Ireland in October and um, looking forward to a few more surprises. <laughs> Well, I, to, I had a question for Tish again, because I know the mural work you've done, I was wondering how that change of scale has informed your work when you come back to it. Um, it what it gave to me was an inner, inner eye, because climbing down scaffolding over and over again mm -hmm. to go across the street to see what I painted, yeah. you know, gave me that time, uh, yeah, sure. and it was too much time and I would always have a schedule when painting murals. And especially when I was doing the big one in Maniunk, um, I, it was a horrible location because trucks were going by and it was 100 degrees. And so I started to trust myself uh, much more. And that was in 97 that I painted that uh, huge mural. Um, and, in, and I really feel that I trusted my feelings about color and about things, and that it really helped. And then also, I learned a lot about um, scale uh, as far as having to draw a small drawing and make it 420 feet. <laughs> um, and that grid, um, you know, helps you to organize your thoughts and, and whatever. Um, yeah, it, it, and then I was painting very large paintings, was too. I was doing huge paintings. At that time. So yeah, at that time. From that to that. Have you done any murals recently? No. I, I had to restore that big one in, oh. in Manioc mm -hmm. last, last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't paint large anymore mm -hmm. because um, it just, it, I don't have time. Because I have a full time job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. I don't know whether I answered it. Did I answer it? You did. It? Yeah. Okay. I have a question. I just want to know what inspiration that this made you hand this painting. What inspiration that you have, or what is. Inspiration. Yes. So the inspiration actually was a color itself. Uh, the painting they didn't look anything like this. If you can really look at it, you will see like under that the uh, blue or blues variation of blues. There are other colors like there is some like gray, a uh, black, uh, red, orange, green, white. Like there are a lot of colors that I make in the beginning. And then I choose what to stay and what to go. I like save the best, you know, and they're not so good, you know. It's covered by another color. And sometimes really I cover many times, not just with one color. Like uh, uh, I keep changing, like until like I feel that the mood of the painting all is one. And uh, one thing really I want to talk about in, in uh, not this painting, but in painting in general. Is like which a lot of people really uh, probably uh, like judging by myself. I didn't know much about that before, which is the dominant color. Uh, most masterpieces, you know, you will see there is always a dominant color. Like I look my painting like uh, 20, 30 years ago, I have green, red, blue, yellow, like like uh, all equal colors. They all fighting each other. Like this is good and this is good and this is good and this is good, but you don't know where to look, you know. Uh, but like a dominant color works like like the lake and it has the boats in it, you know. So you see the boats each one and you see the lake, you know, or like uh, mm. uh, the tree which holds the cups. It's holding the painting, holding the composition. So I do work with dominant color too. And with like a big, small, smaller, where we do have the tendency to do same size shape. Like if I started with this shape at this size, my next shape would be the same, you know? So I try when I see myself doing that, don't do that, you know? So I do bigger shape and smaller and smaller. Uh, so I get the inspiration of what like the things that are happening, you know? And I do use like my hand, like covering like part. What if this is uh, blue? Oh, blue would look good, you know, or green, you know? So I do use this black parts of the painting and cover, 
plucking parts. It's like you're really covering what's under, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And what I can replace that color or that shape with, you know. So I do uh, replace it like in this uh, uh, painting. It is the blue. I replace with like blue or variation of uh, the blues. Aside from that technical that you are talking about, the color that you put in as it comes to your mind and your chin, is there any message in the painting that you want to tell the viewer or the, make the viewer think about it? Is there any message? Any message that you want to tell the audience or the viewer to think about? Message? Yes, yeah, special yeah. message that you want to project to the viewer. Definitely. Message is like art for art, you know. <laughs> like we, enjoy, we enjoy the birds singing, you know. Because it's beautiful, really. We do not have to understand, oh, the bird is saying this, so I'm going to like it. So the meaning really doesn't matter to me much. It's more the visual stimulation and the feeling. Same like with the sound of the bird. You know, it's beautiful and we love it, but we don't have to understand it. So in this painting, it you just know, con convey the, the beauty of thing to the viewer, just to see it as it is and to feel beautiful mm -hmm. about it. Again, I... just to see it and just feel beautiful about it mm -hmm. without any particular objects. Of... Yes. Yeah. There isn't anything really in my mind whatsoever. You know, of shapes. You know, even if you may see something look like something, I really do not mean it. It just happened. You know. But I can bring it, you know, like... Uh, uh. Thank you. Since both of you, each of your paintings seems to be an adventure or a journey in terms of creating, how do you know when it's done? How, how, how do you make a decision that um, it's, it's what I want, it's what I, it, it's me, or whatever it would be? Very good question, you know, like I said, <laughs> all out is out. I love what Gorky said about that when they asked him the same question, you know, when the painting is done. He said the painting is never done. If it is done, it means it's dead, you know, it's finished, it's dead, you know. But rather I decide to stop working on it for a while, you know. And that while can take forever, like, you know. So for the painting, same like Picasso, they asked him, when they asked him, he said, like, if I actually, like, it's never done, if I can get, like, uh, some paint and a brush, even my, my work is, like, anywhere, I'll go work on it. In a museum, I'll go work on it, you know. So it's really never done for the artist. But there is a period where you really can stop working on it, it may uh, even not be finished, which is really, actually, it's better than a finish, like Gorky said, like, it's a fin if it's finished, it's dead, you know, die. So seeing the history of the application, the layers you did when you started the painting, the layers you did after in the middle, the layers you did at the end, you know, that's all a journey, beautiful journey, you know. So we don't have to cover like what started, you know. We can show each step of this process. This is how I feel about like when the painting is done. So when, when, when it can stand on its own, I decide, oh, that's enough, you know. And uh, sometimes I go and walk like on it, like after a year or two, I touch it, I change something in it. That's okay, you know, because it's never done, you know, for me. Unless it's framed. <laughs> yeah. I painted on frame paintings. Yeah. You want me to say, oh. Yeah. Um, it's kind of the same thing. I, I have a feeling, or I have a show, um, and uh, I, I just picked up something today that I started in 1990 that's just a little watercolor and I never finished it. But I feel like some of these I could take out of the frames and I could work on them some more, but if I did, I might not know where it's going. Uh, I, I just have a feeling when it's done yeah. um, that I want to start something new. And I, I work on seven paintings at the same time, uh, if not more. I usually have them across my wall, mm -hmm. and I come into the studio and I go, oh my gosh, you know, and I do something to that one, and then I go, well, that taught me 
that that's what I should do to that one. And so I'm always going back and forth because I'm never sure, never sure uh, where I'm going. But then you do kind of, you, yeah, you do kind of trust, you have a gut feeling, I don't want to do anything more than that. And move on to the next thing. Yeah, yeah, I never really like try to finish a painting or force it to work on one painting. Same like you have seven paintings. Yeah. Sometimes I have like five to ten, you know, yeah. like they're all in process. And when I go to my studio, I look, 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 one of them particular one, you know, put yellow here, you know. So I go to that painting and start, you know. Mm -hmm. And when it's enough, enough, I go to another one, another one, you know. So I finish a series, you know, I'm not like... I have to finish a painting. I keep working on it. Sometimes when you keep working on a painting without giving a rest, screw it up, you know, because you, you don't see what's happening sometimes. You, you need to let it sit. It's like a gourmet cooking, like slow cooking uh, versus fast food, you know, like it's more delicious, you know, when it really sits. And sometimes when you get the decision, like later on, like after two weeks or a month even, to look at the same painting, the decision you will make will be 100% different than the decision uh, if, you, if you did it at the same time, like last month, you know, because you change. Uh, so, yeah. That's kind of refreshing. I like that, you know, yeah. that, yeah. that uh, we don't have the answers. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and like each painting will strengthen the other. Like I work on this, then I discover something in that. Mm -hmm. When I discover something, I can go back and do this here, you know, and then I see something here. So it's really bitter when you work on many paintings at the same time than try to finish one, you know. Patricia, I think your artwork to me is very serene and calm and still. I wonder, do you have to center yourself before you start all of this so serene thing? Oh yeah, definitely. And I, I, uh, we had, uh, we had a crazy fall because we had to get out of our studio that we'd been in for, i have been in mine 33 years. And I had to get out in 96 hours. And I had to make decisions about my work, what I kept, what I threw out, whatever. I'd never be, I've always been very stable in that space, and I could go in that space and feel uh, calm, uh, even though you know I'd had a bad day. I could walk there and just go in because it was part of my body, that space. So in the fall, I, it was <coughs> traumatic, very traumatic, and. My um, partner and I found another space very quickly, but um, it, 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 we're sharing it. I never have shared a space before, and it's been it's been an adjustment. But it's very quiet there, and so when I when I, I even though the Amtrak's going by <laughs> very loud, it almost shakes the building. Um, you know, I, I have to sit down and I cannot paint until I've let everything go. And then I can be part of it. And then I can paint for 15 minutes and I'm okay. Um, I don't have to work on it anymore that day. But I definitely, definitely have to be there. Because it seems to show in your work. If you're so still and so calm and so serene that you can project in your painting. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad that you feel that way. <laughs> Can I see your work? Oh, thank you. What did you do to calm yourself when you that point that you were? Almost meditation in here. Oh, good. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. So, Catherine, though, these were all, are you saying that these paintings in this show were all in the studio at the same time, as you said, you were working on them or not? Necessarily. Uh, not necessarily like these, these and, and others. There are still like unfinished paintings, you know. Mm -hmm. And so just like I picked for the show, you know, what I feel like it's more done, you know, or more something I can show. But yeah, these are like that. But for a while, actually, I did not have a studio. 
So I used to work in the where I teach, like Midline Health Center or Wayne Health Center or Perkins Center. So I did work actually uh, with the students, you know, put an easel and start working because I didn't have a studio. But lately, like the last two, three months, I did the basement in the, uh, my house uh, and uh, I am very happy with it, you know. So now I can, like what I said, is about now, you know, like, but like when I take my work to uh, an art center, I take only one or two paintings, you know. I don't have the luxury of looking at like seven or eight paintings, you know, and like paint what I want to do. But in my studio, yes, I do that. So does one painting inspire you to, do you ever look at a particular painting and say, okay, I want to explore this part of it, or do you do that, or it's just totally different? Uh, yes, yes, I, I repeat sometimes, I repeat the things I did and I like, like in a painting, I see that they are, they are good, they're pleasing me, you know, mm -hmm. I do that again and again and again. A lot of artists, by, by, by the way, they, like you go to a show really, like uh, with good artists, you can find that they're doing really the same composition almost again and again and again. Like uh, Gorky said, like the Garden of Sushi, the series, over 20 paintings of the same composition. Like every time, of course, even if you want to copy it, it won't be the same. So every time it changes, you know, it changes, it changes. And of course, like it gets bitter and bitter and bitter, like uh, with, with Gorky. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have refreshments around the corner here. Nars will be here. Yeah. 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 Was it okay? Yeah. 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 Ye